All right, I heard a lot of confusion as y'all left, so here's the video on how to do these examples. So what you see here, we talked about functions. Just keep remembering when we go through this, one input is exactly one output. So look at letter A. Letter A, you have inputs of negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Those are all different inputs, and they all have exactly one output. So by definition, that is a function. Look at letter B. You have 4, 8, 6, 4, and 5. Those are the inputs. Notice that we had a repeating input at 4 and 4 here. But notice the outputs are different. So by definition, our, as a function, one input has to be exactly one output. So since this input is 0 and this input is 3, so you have 4, 0, and 4, 3, those inputs should only have one output, but in this case they have two, so this is not a function. Um, so like, like this little trick is when you're trying to do uh, points or tables, just look to see if there's any repeating inputs. If they are repeating, make sure their output's the same. Letter C, you look at your inputs. 2, 1, 0, 0, 1, 2. You have lots of repeaters here. This input 2 is outputs 3. This input 2, which say number, is 8. Therefore, right off the bat, you can say no. To confirm this, you can look at another one. Input 1, input 1 here. Well, one input has one output, 4. This one input has a 7 output. Therefore, again, not a function. Now, another little web diagram here. Remember, again, definition. One input is one output. That one input has one output. This 3 has one output. This 11 has one output. They can share outputs, but they can only have one output for that input. So 11 only has 15, which is fine. That's a function, too. All right. Uh, try some of these real quick. Um, you can freeze it. Um, go ahead and freeze it and let you try it, and then I'll give the answers. All right, here you go. Here's the answers for those. Not a function, 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 and not a function. Okay. All right. The next one, another example to look at, is our little visual. We talked about how one input has to have one output. The, if you do that method, it's going to be x equals 2. So add x equals 2 here. You'll notice you have an output of 2 and 5. Therefore, one, this one input, x value, has two outputs, not a function. We can also use the vertical line test. If you, have, if you ever make a vertical line and there's two points on there, therefore it's not a function. So that, this one does not pass the vertical line test, so it's not a function. Whereas this one right here, if you do a bunch of vertical lines, you will only ever have one point. Therefore, it's going to be a function. Actually, I'll give you all one to try, try this. All right, so look at letter 5. I'm going to look at number 5, 6, 7, and 8. Tell me if those are functions or not a functions. All right, go ahead and freeze it or pause it, and I'm going to give you the answers. All right, here are the answers. This one right here is a function, passes the vertical line test. This one is a function, passes the vertical line test. This one obviously has two points when you do that, not a function. This one is a function, it passes the vertical line test. All right, another one, find the domain and range. When we talk about domain and range, domain is all the x values. So when you look at this here, the domain is gonna be all the x's. So what is this x value here? Well, it's x equals negative three, this is x equals negative 1, x equals 1, and x equals 3. So that's your actual domain. Okay, The, uh, the range is going to be all the y. So right here, this y value is going to be negative 2, y equals 0, uh, y equals 2, and then y equals 4. Notice I put this into coordinate, uh, coordinate points, little, little points there, and x, y, x, y, x, y, x, y. Inputs are all in blue, outputs are y. So those are actually your domain. That is your domain. So domain is right there, negative 3, negative 1, 1, and 3. Range is negative 2, 0, 2, and 4, and that kind of lines up with those points. Now over here, this is what's considered a discrete point. Okay? Those are just points here and there. If it's continuous, it's going to be using your inequalities you just did. So you'll notice here in this part, the domain, well, the domain is left and right. So the domain goes all the way to, to negative 2, but then goes all the way over here to 3. Okay. So our domain is going to be from negative 2 to 3. Now, how do you write that? Okay. Well, domain is going to be uh, negative 2 is less than or equal to x, but no greater than or equal to 3. Okay. Just like you did your inequalities um, last chapter. Now, the y's, okay, the lowest possible y, you always do the lowest one first because uh, it's you put in the order. Um, lowest one is negative 1, and it goes all the way up to 2. So you write negative 1 is less than or equal to y, 
end is less than or equal to 2. So in that, say, in that case, you can see here, negative 1 is the lowest point. Number to the 2 for the y value is the highest point. And notice that these are closed circles. So the inequalities are going to be have the equal sign underneath. Okay. Hopefully that helps out a whole bunch. Uh, kind of look through those, and that might help. And if you want to do some more practice problems, uh, here, you try these, and I'll let you try those real quick. Try those. Go ahead and freeze it. And then I will give you the answers now. Uh, function, not a function. The domain is from negative 3 to 2. The y values is negative 3 up to positive 1. And then using the function to solve it, independent variables x, dependence always the y. And domain is going to be those that to give the domain what's the y values right there. Okay, from the, that graph. You plug in your x value in there and get your y out. Hope, hopefully that helped.